What's up, nerds and geeks? My name is OMG, WTF, LOL, WBRB. Welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We are playing as the WWF in the year 2001. More importantly, we are booking the evasion, and we are going to be running Sunday Night Heat here tonight. So let's go ahead and start off the show. Of course, no pre-show matches being Sunday Night Heat. I think this heat's going to be interesting because our main event of the night is going to do worse than all the other matches. It's going to be the worst angle on the show. I'm calling it now. Maybe not the worst angle, but still, it's going to be the, probably the worst match on the show. And uh, it's going to be our main Sunday Night Heat storyline, so that's why it's going to be the main event. But still, I think it's going to be a little interesting how that works out. Either way, though, we start off the Sunday Night Heat show with a, not a solid B-, minus. I don't know why I said that, and I also forgot to change numbers. I know one of you nerds and geeks asked me to change over to numbers instead. Um, I usually don't like the numbers too much, just because sometimes it just doesn't make sense to me. Some of the numbers you'll be like, oh, how is that a B, or whatever. Anyway, I used to have um, a mod on Total Extreme Wrestling 2013. It was a Snopes mod. I believe it was Snopes. And it was where it had like a split thing, like it cut them in half, where part of it showed the grade, and then part of it showed the number grade. So I think I'm going to see if there is one for Total Extreme Wrestling 2016 as well, but I meant to change it, I just forgot. Either way, in a bout that had decent wrestling, but not between Heath, Raven defeating the Big Boss Man with the Pile Driver in 7 minutes 53 seconds, Raven with the B- minus performance, Boss Man with the C, no worker improvements, we then go to a D-plus rating, to start off our Sunday Night Heat storyline, as we see Molly Holly, she's backstage in the catering hall when she is approached by WCW's Gregory Helms. Helms comes in and he says, Well, 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 looky here. Now who might this fine young lady be? Is that... Is that Molly Holly? Hey, Molly. What's up? See you getting some food. Maybe you want to come sit with me and we can go turn this into a little date. That's when Spike comes in and he says, Hey, the hell do you think you're doing? Gregory Helms then responds, Putting the moves on a pretty lady, what's it to you? Spike says, Well, that pretty lady just so happens to be my girlfriend. And then Helms says, What? You mean to tell me this fine thing is with you? What's up with that? And then Spike says, Hey, look here, jerk. You can disrespect me all you want, but I won't stand by and let you treat a lady like that or talk to a lady like that. Of course, referencing that he called her Thang and all that. And he says, so you can either apologize and move along, or you can meet me in the ring tonight. And then Helms goes, fine, I'm sorry for this. And then he pushes Spike Dudley. Spike goes rolling over the catering table, taking all the food with him. And then Gregory just looks over at Molly and he says, I'll see you out there, sweet lips. And then maybe does like a quick little mwah thing or winks at her as he walks off. Starting the Spike Dudley Gregory Helm storyline. The performance of Molly Holly was good, so she must have some pretty good sex appeal. Because that's what I rated her on. But uh, either way, starting the storyline and Spike Dudley making the improvements in acting and developing better performance skill. Good on you, Spike. I'm, I'm not sure if I clicked it. I don't want to click it again and then it skip it like it did on Raw. But let's go ahead. All right, we're good. We go to a solid B rating. Nothing too special here. It's kind of like the This Week in the WWF segments, and it probably would have been a part of it if I would have been able to fit it in. But um, I only had one more spot left in that segment, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So this is just pretty much highlighting um, what happened on Nitro this past Thursday when uh, Paul Heyman and Shane McMahon had an interaction where Heyman told him that this is just getting started pretty much, telling him that... um. Not to really worry about it, of course, because he had a party going on, but just that things are about to get extreme. So I'd imagine, you know, them highlighting this video and then talking about what exactly they think Paul Heyman meant by that. They get the crowd hotter. They're like, ooh, is Paul Heyman coming out? Uh, no, Paul Heyman is not coming out. As we move to our next segment, which sees real, I almost said William Regal, like I'm Scooby-Doo or something. As William Regal is in the ring with Power Plant, Mark Jindrak, and Sean Stasiak, the number one contenders to the WWF Tag Team titles. And uh, Regal says, Now, gentlemen, to get you two prepared for the biggest match of your career so far, 
I've went ahead and I brought in two former WCW Tag Team Champions to help prepare to face TNA to take the WWF Tag Team titles away. But be warned, as I've said, these are former WCW Tag Team Champions, so don't take them that lightly. Now allow me to introduce your opponents, Disco Inferno and Das Wonder Kid, Alex Wright. And that brings in our two developmental stars, so this is our local talent slash developmental superstar of the week to bring up as Das Wonder Kid, Alex Wright, and Disco Inferno get the call up once again to um, this time team up in tag team action. Former tag team champions, that is a fact. I've looked it up. They did get the crowd hotter, so the crowd want to see Das Wonder Kid and Disco Inferno. By the way, speaking of the two, uh, Alex Wright is improving in acting and also learning to show more charisma, and uh, Disco Inferno is improving in acting, so there you go. That leads us into our matchup, which gets a C-, minus. that's not too bad. So we have a C- minus rating here, and a poor match, Power Plant, Mark Jindrak, and Sean Stasiak defeat Alex Wright and Disco Inferno when Sean Stasiak defeated Disco with a submission hold. Uh, unfortunately, Disco was the weak link in the match. He was struggling to keep up with everyone else's in performance. But uh, that's okay, since this was just a quick little job match. We had um, Alex Wright getting better at his gimmicks. That's awesome. Jindrak and Stasiak, both with solid Cs in the in-ring performance category. Uh, Disco with a D, and Alex Wright with a D+. Plus. So it's not like they are too far from each other. And still, making improvements here. Alex Wright taking advantage of these call-ups. Improving in performance this time around with Mark Jindrak improving in Rumble. So just a way to keep the two looking strong, heading into their tag team title match, plus keeping true to Sunday Night Heat by making it a local talent and uh, home for the developmental stars to get their shots as well. We then move to an A rating here. This is pretty much just our this week in the WWF storyline, highlighting the events that happened throughout the week. Of course, highlighting the triple threat match that occurred between Jericho, Rock, and Triple H for the number one contendership of Austin's title with Austin, or not Austin, with Rock getting the win, and then Austin and Rhino getting the sneak attack on the Rock. And then, of course, highlighting the Edge, Chris Benoit segment with uh, Edge pretty much coming out and challenging Benoit, but Benoit backing down and then Regal getting speared. It did lose the Jericho Rock storyline heat, but that was at an A star, so that is a little unfortunate, but I. I don't really... What is this handle changes right here? Oh, that's right. We're building Jericho up. I forgot. By the way, we go into our main event of the night, which, believe it or not, I was not expecting a C- minus of all things, but good on you guys. A C-? minus. You proved me wrong. In a Teddy Bull match, Gregory Helms goes on to beat Spike Dudley in 7 minutes, 47 seconds, by pinfall with a handful of tights, so he didn't get the win... You know, fairly here. But either way, Gregory Helms does get the win after this match. Uh, Spike, unfortunately, was really off his game, so that's unfortunate. Molly did some good work ringside, so this being the first time Molly and Spike have been with each other in the manager position, it's good to see that they don't have negative chemistry. Spike, of course, had an in performance of a D. Gregory with the D+, plus, so he was superior in the match, and it gained heat for the two. No worker improvements. That ends off the show with a B- minus rating. Not too shabby, if you ask me. And, uh, yeah. I like the, the storyline between that, though. We have a decision. I haven't issued any contracts, so I wonder what that is. Well, either way, uh, people enjoyed heat. Training begins for uh, Kazuchiki Fujita. I believe he's... I was going to say I believe he's actually a young guy, you know, that'll be in the future, but... I didn't even realize that he's training for an MMA fight. Good for him. And Benoit, of course, he's the best technical wrestler all around the world, apparently. Uh, drug testing fees. What is this? Contract negotiations with Tim White. Okay. And I did. All right, well, come on in, Tim. We're going to keep you. And Raven. Oh, boy. Raven has been identified as a soft drug user meaning more like marijuana and stuff like that. So um, I'm really just going to fine Raven. Marijuana is marijuana, soft drugs, nothing nothing too shabby. I'm not going not gonna to send him the rehab again for, for smoking some bud. Just not happening. Sorry to say it. I want to check this out, though. Oh, yeah, see, it, they brought it down to an A. So, I mean, it's still not bad, but going from an A to an A star, that's a little upsetting. Either way, though. Uh, this is the end of the, I guess, in-ring portion, or the bulk, 
the main thing you guys come for. You guys want to continue on with Sunday Night Heat? Stay along with me. If not, my name's been OMGWTF, LOL to WBRB. I'll see you guys for Monday Night Raw. So let's continue on, shall we? Nitro got broadcasted. It got a 42.62. I'm curious to see if that is better than last time. So let's go ahead and check that. So Nitro, 42.62. And then last week it was 41.96. So we did go up in the rating. That's uh, that's a pretty good, I I think so. Continue on here, though. I wasn't done. Uh, Naoko Sano moved along. His contract expired at NOAA. He's 36. He's still an M-Pro, though, so he's got that. New Japan still looking for people. And apparently Brother Devon is a hot property. Good thing we have him already. Good thing we have him already. What do we got here? Yokira. Oh, never mind. Oh, no. Did oh, I thought that said he passed away. Okay. I was really about to say, did we really just lose another person in game? Uh, nope, we did not. Stu Hart is just retiring. What was he in the first place? He's a retired wrestler, so what is what is he retiring from? Just the business in general? The 86-year-old is retiring from the industry, yes. In one month's time. Alright, well there you go. Good on you. Yang. A young rising star. He's already on our short list. That's Jimmy Wang Yang to uh, those who don't know. Alex Shane is apparently a hot property. I guess we'll go ahead and shortlist him. That name does sound a little familiar. And Asuka signs up Brian Kendrick. He's going to be, I think, touring with them. Yes, he is. As Spanky. Good on you, Spanky. Going to Asuka Pro. Has he had any other matches besides ours? Nope, he hasn't. I'd like to imagine that the they saw his matches in ours, and he's like, we need, we need Brian Kendrick. I doubt it, but still. Uh, Jack Doan, who I believe is a referee. Yeah, he's a flabby lightweight. You're, you're putting on weight. Come on. What are you doing, Jack Doan? I, need, I only like skinny referees. Like I care. Jack Doan, flabby lightweight. Ooh. I think Dean Malenko was flabby. Or is Flabby still. But he's like the only wrestler that we have is Flabby. What is our decision now? I haven't... Noah departure, what is this? Oh, wait, they held the show departure. Never mind. I was like, who left? Negro Cass was the highlight on New Japan. Still setting their sights, of course. Apparently, Haruga eh, Eigen, whatever that says, needs a break. Wife beater, fully fit, lovely, because we love our wife beater, huh? Okay, spoiler. Pay raise from Ric Flair. What? What do you even do? You think you deserve a pay raise? I don't think you do, especially not that much. But he'll get mad. I know he will if I don't give him a pay raise. But I don't I don't use him as a wrestler. All Ric Flair is All Ric Flair is and we can we can go All right, whatever. I thought he was on there. I didn't see him. We could just click him from here. What was I even thinking? We can go to his popularity and he yeah, I I guess. I guess. He was, you know, around a B. Of course, he's getting a little more popular. But that much, Rick? You want that much? You want almost a $20,000 pay raise? No. I'll give you 50 He's annoyed. He's definitely annoyed by our decision. I'll give you 50 Be happy with that. $20,000 pay raise? Get out of my face. Face. By the way, I mean, I don't want you guys going back and purposely looking for any spoilers if I accidentally showed them. But if you do just so happen to see some spoilers, don't, you know, don't comment down below talking about it. Just, you know, 
ignore it, wait, don't spoil it for anybody else. Either way, nerds and geeks, I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is going to be the end of uh, this episode. Nothing too special going on here, but uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed nonetheless. If you have, do me a favor, leave me a comment, like, and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, my name has been OMGWTF, LOLFWBRB, and I will see you guys for Monday Night Raw. So until then, have a good one.